Hello, everybody. Welcome to another great episode of Distilled, Brewed, and Reviewed. We are here in the famous Sipping Den. My name is John. And on this channel, I do everything that has anything to do with alcohol. I have to explain it for a second. Why? Because this channel is unique, and you need to know why. Because, first off, I do everything that has anything to do with alcohol. It's a lot of stuff. And you say, man, that's unbelievable. How the hell does he do that? Oh, that's just the start. I also do everything that has anything to do with coffee. Yeah. Those are posted on Sunday. I do a world-famous Sunday morning coffee review. It is amazing, and I am the only one in the world that can do it. And to make it easy for you, I have cracked the code that YouTube put together for the playlist. And now, I have been able to categorize and subcategorize everything I do to make it easy for you to find. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. Every comment, the first one's pinned because it always has a link to the playlist whatever I'm, I'm reviewing, and in this case, it is Scotch Whiskey. Oh, man. It's amazing. I got an interesting thing going on today, okay? Eric Toller gave me two whiskeys. He's given me a lot of them, but in this case, he's given me these two whiskeys. Eric's, Eric, thank you. He gave me a famous grouse, Smoky Black, $25. Smoky Black, $25. And he gave me an Octomore. Brooklyn Octomore 13.1 between two and three hundred dollars. It is also known to be smoky and peaty. We are going to compare those today and see if there what the difference is between two to three hundred dollars, depending on where you get it, scotch and the twenty-five dollar scotch. I have done separate videos on these on this playlist right here. And you can check those out. This is the comparison. Now here's the color. Guess which one? This one's darker. This is the $25 one. Doesn't matter. You know, you can color scotch, and obviously they did. That's what I love about bourbon. It's the most restrictive whiskey in the world, and you can't do a damn thing to it. All right. But I love scotch as well. So let's take the famous grouse. Pour it in here. I just did the review on the famous grouse. This is the glass I used. And we will take... The Octomore. And pour it here. And then, whoa, oh, that's not. All right, let me tell you what's going on. So, here's the difference in color. All right, this is the famous grass. This is the Octomore. Now, as soon as I poured the, uh, I didn't smell anything when I poured the right from a distance here, the famous grouse. As soon as I poured the Octomore, boom, boom, smoke, peat. I'm smelling right now, overpowering, nothing from the famous grouse, the Octomore is flying through. There's a, mm. but is it a good smell? Is it a good smell? Famous grouse. And as I said before, uh, smoky, not crazy smoky, but smoky, fruity, sweet smelling. What about the Octomore 13.1? More of a charred smoke, if that makes any sense. More of a charcoal smoke. Smelling charcoal as opposed to a subtle smoke. Smoke. Smoke way over the top compared to the smoky grass. Yeah, way, way, way. So, dominating. Smoke, peat. Dominating. You have to dig and dig deep for the subtle flavors of the fruit. Not in the famous grass. Famous grass is sweet and fruity with a hint of smoke. This is thick smoke. Thick peat with a slightest, it's got Band-Aid, it's got iodine, it's got fruit, but it's buried deep, it's buried real deep. Let's taste the famous grouse. Thin, sweet, fruity. A little bit of smoke. A 
stock tomorrow, 13.1. Even after the acclimation sip of having just reviewed the famous grass and taken another acclimation sip of it, this is hot, this is burning, this is thicker, oily. Feels like it has more substance. Is a hot one. Getting the fruit now that I'm acclimated. Getting the thick smoke blows the other one away. You like smoke, you just, it just destroys it. Um, heatiness, smokiness, a little bit of iodine, a little bit of bandage, band aid. Underlying sweetness coming through pretty good now. Taking over. It's not in your face sweet, but it's sweet with the smoke ever present, sweet fighting its way through. Sweet like fruit. A bit of that barrel influence. Famous grouse. Now in comparison, tasting chocolatey. Really thin and watery comparison on the mouthfeel. Now on the Octomore. Getting some pepper, some spice. Band-Aid fading. Pepper, spiciness. Underlying sweetness, underlying fruit, thick smoke. Thick mouthfeel. Legs coming down, I doubt you can see them, but legs coming down on this, nothing here. This is probably not the Octomore 13.1, a beginner scotch. This is definitely a beginner scotch, even though it's supposedly more smoky than usual. Because um, it's sweet, it's easy. It's lower proof. Just an easy drinker with a lot of good flavor. I mean, there's, I can see why people would prefer it. If you develop a palate over time. Yes, you're looking for that smoke, you're looking for that peat, you're looking for those subtle flavors coming through, you're looking for that mouthfeel, that oil that's provided by the Octomore. You have to trust me, I could have done a blind, I'd have known immediately by the smell, just immediately, so it would have been useless to do. Um, and there's nobody who would, <laughs> they wouldn't know. Um, There it is. What do you prefer? I'm going to tell you something. It's, it is fun to be able to do this. It is interesting. It's a great opportunity. And this was given to me by Eric. He provided these uh, samples. Now I'm able to do them side by side and really put everything together with that Octomore and see what that beginning scotch is like. Go back to when I first started drinking scotch and I was drinking scotches like this one. To this day, I still have an affinity for them every once in a while. Um, especially if I'm drinking out of a flask or uh, at a game. Uh, I just want a simple, easy to drink uh, scotch. My go-to, the first scotch I ever had was Dewar's White Label. Um, I liked it immediately from the first sip. And to this day, I have an affinity for it. Um, scotches like this. I could take, put it in a flask, go to a game, do my piping, 
I used to bagpipe. Um, and that's what I like to sip on, see? And this one, the aqua, which is empty now, is something I like to think about. It's an intellectual drink. It's one where I'm listening to music, and I'm sipping that, and I'm watching it change, and maybe I'm adding a few drops of water. Maybe I'm putting it over a cube. And what? This one, I'm just enjoying the music, not paying attention to the whiskey. Two different things, all right? Two different things occasions, applications, two different ways that I drink them and enjoy them. Yeah. So, thank you for being here. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about this. Uh, it was fun. It was good. Eric, thank you. I'll see you on the next one, everybody.